Well, for more, our Chief Foreign Affairs Editor Rob Parsons is here in studio with me. Rob, let's talk a little bit about the wider context and the ongoing security situation in the region. Well, yeah, I mean, the situation is clearly not good at the moment with this uh, is Islamist movement spreading across uh, from Mali into Niger, Burkina Faso. Uh, we've seen it in Nigeria. We've seen, we've seen it encroaching even into uh, Ivory Coast and Ghana. There is a massive security problem, and the governments of the, of the region have not been coping with it at all well. At the same time, we've seen uh, political instability across the region as well. You just mentioned in your introduction coup d'etats in, in Guinea, coup d'etats in Mali too, in the space of a year uh, in Mali, and just a little bit beyond uh, also in the Sahel, in Chad as well. Uh, and, and the problem really is how you respond to this, because many of the, the, the governments that have been overthrown have been at the very best incompetent, at the worst corrupt. Uh, and al although there has been condemnation uh, from regional organizations like ECOWAS, the Economic Community of West African States, and the uh, African Union as well. The, the problem is, you know, wh wh when the, the, the coups are supported by popular uh, uprising as well, as we've seen, or uprising is probably too strong a word, but certainly popular support in, in Mali uh, and we're seeing popular support in Burkina Faso at the moment, it would seem, uh, for this coup d'etat. How do you respond to that? ECOWAS's approach, backed by the United Nations, backed by the European Union, ha ha has been to impose sanctions uh, in Mali. Uh, but as a consequence, uh, ECOWAS has earned the hostility of the people in Mali. And if it imposes sanctions uh, in Burkina Faso, it will probably incur the anger of the people uh, of Burkina Faso as well, where a third of the population at least lives in poverty, even by West African standards, it's a poor country, and where there's no doubt uh, that the the military operations carried out by the, by the, the, the government of Burkina Faso have been incompetent uh, over the last year. Uh, the, the most recent attack in November, in which 54 people were killed, uh, in which the, the soldiers fighting against the insurgents were short of ammunition, hardly had any food, uh, and that has led to the situation we're seeing at the moment. So quite clearly, you know, it, it's, it, it's understandable to say that this is a problem for democracy uh, in, in West Africa. But there has to be a, a, a really serious attempt to address the underlying issues which are leading to these coups d'etat as well. The, the poverty, the incompetence, the corruption. And until that is dealt with, uh, these sort of coups are going to keep on recurring. You know, it, it's not the first coup d'etat in Burkina Faso by any means. Uh, the last one was in 2014, and the man who was ousted in 2014 himself came to power by a coup d'etat. And the French president, he's saying that he's going to be holding talks with regional leaders. Um, how do you think that's going to all play out for Paris? What do you expect to come out of that? Well, you know, we know President Macron has condemned the coup d'etat, as one would expect him to do. Uh, but, you know, he has to go beyond that. You know, he, it will be clear to him that this is, the coup d'etat has achieved its goal of getting rid of Roch Cabore, the outgoing president. He's not going to come back, it's, it would seem. It's very unlikely. The French government has a vested interest in security across the region. It has a special forces operation out of Ouagadougou, the Burkina Faso capital. It's going to want to maintain that. It will need good relations with the government of Burkina Faso, whoever is, in, uh, whoever is at the head of it. So the likelihood is that the government in France, although it's making all the correct noises at the moment condemning the coup d'etat, will be looking a little bit down the road and thinking, we've got to continue to cooperate with these people. We will hope looking at it from the French perspective, that the government that comes into power, these young officers who have been complaining about the way this, the, the, the military response to the, the Islamist uprisings across the region has been carried out, will be more efficient, will be more committed to improving training, to arming, and so on and so forth, and that there will be po a possibility for France to continue its role in the region in fighting against uh, the, these insurgents. Coming, of course, in the context of ele presidential elections coming up here in the next couple of months as yeah. well. Chief Foreign Affairs Editor uh, Rob Parsons, thanks so much for joining us in studio.